Well, I want to say happy Saturday, Shabbat Shalom. I have a word to share with you today in this prophetic word of the month. Of course, every month, uh, I believe the Lord gives us wisdom, revelation, and, and how to approach every single month because the times and seasons do belong to our God. And, uh, of course, I, I've been given prophetic words of the month, uh, you know, for years now. Uh, but, uh, you know, it seems like every year... It's just getting heavier and heavier, and every year is getting stronger and stronger. Why? Because the day of the Lord is at hand. The day of the Lord is near. And because uh, we are in the end times, and because the days are heavier, stronger, darker, uh, the word is sharper. The word is even more detrimentally effective and powerfully uh, represented. Uh, but listen, uh, I'm going to give you a prophetic word of the month, and and there's a lot that I'm going to say, and it's really going to bless you. So I want all of you to just begin to give some hearts, like, and do share, share, share. Amen. And I want to make some quick announcements. Of course, tonight I'm going to be in North Hollywood. Tomorrow I'm going to be in Tustin Sunday. And Monday, someone say Monday. I wish uh, somebody had the uh, the link here. On Monday, we are doing our Impartations webinar, okay, with myself, Prophet Jesse Shap, and uh, Natasha Han, okay. I believe in the power, the ministry of impartation. In fact, the Apostle Paul says, I long to come to you so that I may impart something to you that you do not have. Which means that Apostle Paul is saying, I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to come to you unless I'm giving you, imparting something into you that you do not have. Come on, somebody. Who here knows that we don't have it all? Yes, we have it in the Holy Ghost. But some people come to activate, to impart certain things. Can we append that to the top, please? All right. But uh, So that's going to be on Monday. And, of course, Wednesday, we're going back to New Mexico for the Navajo Nation Revival. So, amen. Well, I want to talk to you today about the prophetic word for the month of August. My gosh, some say, hallelujah, amen. I want to give you the prophetic word of the month of August. And here's a title. Okay, the, uh, yesterday I did a teaching in Long Beach about the power of the name and that God has given us the authority, like Adam, to name certain animals, to name certain things, right? God told Adam, I want you to name this uh, a bunny, a, a rabbit, a, a donkey, a, a horse. And so there's an authority when you begin to name things in the Spirit of God. Because names, some say names, it represents your prophetic future and your destiny. In fact, your face is your name. Your name is your face. It's your brand. It's who you are. So, uh, Every month, the Lord gives me these words. And of course, last month, month of July, the Lord gave me a very, very strong word that the golden calves are falling down, okay? The golden calves are falling down. And why? Because it, that was the time where literally um, uh, Moses came down from Mount Sinai and he saw the Jewish people prostrating, prostituting themselves to the golden calf. So, of course, Moses kicked it down, pushed it down, and those people who worshipped this false god and this idol had to eat uh, or drink of that liquid gold. Amen? The Bible says that you will reap what you sow. The Bible says you will eat the fruit of your mouth. So don't think that you can do sin and get away with it. Don't think that you can talk bad about men and women of God and get away with it. You can't. You cannot. All right? So... Uh, if you partake in the sin, you'll have to partake in the consequence. Uh, so, the Lord told me in the month of July that the golden calves are falling down. Come on, someone say amen. The Jezebels, the idols, the false gods, the principalities, uh, the opinions of man, the attacks, it's all falling down. Amen. But in this month of August, let me declare unto you this title, that the books of heaven are opened and God is about to close the books of 5781, okay? The books, someone say the books. The books are open, people of God. Now, uh, as an introduction, when a book is opened, let's say uh, the IRS, they're about to audit you, okay? Of course, a lot of us don't like the IRS tax collectors. But when the IRS opens your books, are you going to be scared because you didn't pay your taxes? 
because things don't match up, things don't add up, things don't line up? Or are you going to be confident and are you going to be glad because you know that you are in right standing with God? The books of heaven are open right now. And God is about to audit the church. God is about to introspect. He's about to investigate. He's about to look into the details, the knickknacks, the little things of the church. Remember, it's not just about the big things. It's about the little things. Every little thing matters. If you're with me today, say amen. So let me declare unto you, in the month of August, of course, 8, it's the 8th month of the Gregorian calendar. 8 stands for New Beginnings. It is a month of new beginnings, and I'll talk about that. But it is a month where the books are opened. And when certain books are open, God's about to close some books. Hallelujah. God's about to close some books of demons, some books of demonic doctrines. God is about to close some books. And He's about to open up new books of destiny over your life. Some say amen. Right now, we're in the month of Av. In the Hebrew month, Av, A-V, okay? Someone say A-V, all right? Um, we're in the Hebrew month of Av, and Adrian, what does Av mean? Father. Av in Hebrew means father. That's why we get Abba, or Abi, or, or Aboni, right? So Av, A-V, we're in the Hebrew month of Av, means father. Adrian, what happened in the ninth of Av, Tishba Av? What happened there? Yes. Nice and loud. The first temple and the second temple were destroyed on the same day. It's a day of remembrance, a day of mourning. So literally, Tishba Av, which is the ninth of Av, was the worst, most destructive, darkest day in all of Israel's history. Why? Because the Temple of Solomon, the golden glory, I mean, literally where God's presence dwelled, where, where it was the greatest kingdom uh, on all human history on planet Earth. It had so many riches. It had so many riches that literally silver was nothing, right? And that temple was destroyed. And the people were captured into exile. Have you felt like you've been living in a foreign land? Have you felt like... Uh, like you've been exiled, meaning you've become a prisoner. You've become taken away from things that you love, people that you love, platforms that are yours, lands and plots, inheritance that rightfully belong to you. Have you felt like you've been exiled away? But God's about to bring you back. Someone say amen. Ho! God's about to bring you back. And of course, six, seven, eight hundred years later, the very temple during Jesus' day, Herod, the same day Tishba of, which is an open window. Come on, somebody. Open window. That same day, the second temple was also destroyed. All right. So Tishba of is the lowest, darkest point in the whole Jewish year. Ooh, Jesus. Whole Jewish year. Lowest, darkest point and moment. But remember, what goes down must come up. If you go through the wilderness, you must go to the mountaintop. If you've been humbled, then he will lift you up. Come on, somebody. If you've been brought low, then he will lift you up high. If you've gone low, then the Holy Ghost will lift you up. And so Tishba of the ninth of Av, is the lowest point in all of Israel's history. And the reason why <clears throat> that was the open door is because they grumbled. And they turned away from God by worshiping the golden calf. Did you know that, Adrian? That was the open door. That was the opening, beginning sin. But God reverses the curse. So I'm telling you, man. So now, Tishba Av is the lowest. And let me tell you, Av. We're in the Hebrew month of Av right now, which means Father. If you've ever been low, your Heavenly Father is about to bring you near. If you've ever been down, your Heavenly Father is about to bring you up. If you've ever been down, your Heavenly Father is about to bring you close. And that's what this month is all about. This month, Av, is all about the Father. It's all about Menachem Av. In fact, the Jews call it Menachem Av. Menachem, means, which means counselor, comforter. The Bible says, if you've been suffering, He will comfort you. If you've been down, He will lift you up. Someone say, man, I wish somebody received this today. So it's called Menachem Av, and as Tishba Av is the lowest, all of a sudden it goes to the highest point. What happens in the 15th 
of Av, or in Hebrew it's called Tuba Av. Adrian, do you know what happens on the 15th of Av? Yeah, it's a day of joy and love, a day of celebration. It's just a remembrance of love and joy. So the 9th of Av, Tishba, is the lowest, but about a week later, which is Tuba Av, the 15th of Av, it's one of the highest. And Adrian says it's a time of? Joy and love. Joy and love, why? It's similar to Valentine's Day, but in Israel. Yeah. It's similar to Valentine's Day. Well, Adrian knows, the, knows Hebrew, all right. It's similar to Valentine's Day. This is when the daughters of Jerusalem, come on, do we have any daughters? This is when the daughters of Jerusalem, they go out into the fields, and the, and the Jews would say, if any man did not have a wife, he goes out and meets her and becomes bridled. Come on, somebody. It's Tuba Av, the 15th of Av, is a time of, of wedding. It's a time of betrothal. It's a time of intimacy. It's a time of great celebration where people are finding their soulmate. People are getting bewedded. And, and of, again, that is a prophetic picture of the, the Spirit of God, of Jesus Christ. No longer will I call you forsaken or desolate. I call you Hefzaba. I call you Biola. The land is no longer forsaken. I am married to you, says God. I wish some daughters just threw a shoe right now. <laughs> so this is a time where there's dancing and celebration in the vineyards. What does the vineyard stand for? Vineyard stands for the new wine. Vineyard stands for the marriage. Remember, Jesus' first miracle was at the wedding supper of Cana. So whenever you talk about vineyards, it's talking about the new wine, which talks about intoxication of the Holy Ghost, which really talks about marriage. So <clears throat> many scholars actually say that this is one of the greatest festivals of the year. Uh, that Yom Kippur is the first and this is the second. All right. So are you ready to dance? Are you ready to celebrate? Are you ready for the new wine? Are you ready to go into the vineyards? Come on, somebody. Someone say hallelujah. So that's Av. Men I come Av, you experience the lowest, and then you're about to experience the highest. Someone say amen. However, now we're going into the last Hebrew month of the year. It is called Elul. Someone say Elul. Ooh, Shabbat. The last Hebrew month of the year is Elul. And Elul is actually an acronym. And Elul is an acronym. And the Jews say it stands for the king is in the field. Some say the king is in the field. Okay. Why is the king in the field? Again, there's, there's a repeated theme of vineyards and fields. Because it's a month of nearness. It's the last month of the Hebrew year, and we already know that the last will be the first. We already know uh, that it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. It's not, uh, you know, the Bible says your latter will be greater than the former, so it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. And how you finish determines how you're going to start. How do you want to start 5782? How do you want to start the new Hebrew year? So this is the last Hebrew month on the Hebrew calendar. And it's called Elul. E-L-U-L. -L, Elul. And it's a month where the acronym says uh, the king is in the field. And the scripture is from Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 3. I am my beloved and my be beloved is mine. I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. Psalm Psalm 6 3. Elul is an acronym for I am my beloved and he is mine. I belong to him and he fully belongs to me. Jesus. And that is a month of Elul. Why? Because the, the Jewish scholars say God is so near. Literally, the king is in the field like Boaz. Not your po ass, not your broke ass, not your lame ass. He's in the field like bo ass. So Ruth, go and get him. Ruth, go after him. He's in the field right now. 
He's right there. Go and get it. And in this last month, God is so close. He's so near. Do you know why? Because Elul is a month of repentance, fasting, introspection. It is a month where you go deep and you look in and you begin to search your heart, search your soul. Because we're about to enter into Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the new year, which means the books are about to close. Which means the books are about to be sealed by the blood of Jesus. And that's going to be your destiny for 5782. I know that may sound a little mystical, but that's the truth. In fact, you've already heard me saying this the last few days, Rosh Hashanah is the day of judgment. It's, it's a day of remembrance, but it's also a day of judgment. It's the day where literally, if there was a judgment day, the heavens and the world were obliterated, or you died, and we're all lined up to face the judge, the creator. That's Rosh Hashanah. And he opens up the books, and he says, innocent, innocent, guilty. Innocent, innocent, guilty. And all things that we did in the body will be accounted for. And every year is an accounting. Like I said, IRS. Every year is an accounting. And he's opening up the books to search, to introspect, to see what's really going on in your wallet. Surabha. That's why as people are fasting, repenting, making things right, asking people for forgiveness, closing loose, I want to declare unto you, God is bringing closure to that thing. God is bringing closure to that issue. God is closing the door of your heart to those people. Your heart was gaping open like a wound, bleeding, pouring out. But God is about to close that door. He's about to close that issue. He's about to close certain things. He's bringing supernatural, divine healing and closure. No longer will you be traumatized. No longer will you be stuck. No longer will you be wounded. But He's about to bring closure and healing in the mighty name of Jesus. And that's what happens, people of God. As we go deep. Adrian, what happens every day in the month of Elul? Every day, besides fasting and repentance. What happens every day? And the reciting of certain psalms, of course. I haven't got to that month yet, but okay. I'll learn today. You'll learn today. Every month, they blow the show. Every day of Elul, they blow the shofar. Every single day of the month of Elul. And that starts August 10th, okay? Two weeks away. But every day of the month of Elul, which is the last Hebrew month, they blow the shofar every single day. And it is a sound of judgment. It's a sound of repentance. It's a sound that pronounces, Awake, O sleeper, get ready. People, get ready. Shaka Rabbah. It's a sound that's released that it's literally like the voice of God. A clarion call. Come to the Father. Come to Jesus. Come to me. Repent. Meet me in the fields. Meet me in the vineyards. Meet me in the wilderness. It's a voice crying out in the wilderness. Come to me, says God. Every single day. Ooh, are you ready for your breakthrough? Every single day. Come on, somebody. Every single day. Hallelujah. There's going to be trumpet blasts of victory. Trumpet blasts of breakthrough. Trumpet blasts of angelic assistance. Trumpet blasts. Every single day, there's going to be glory breakthrough. There's going to be breaker anointing. Every single day, trumpet blasts. As we're about to close this Hebrew year 5781, I'm going to talk more about what you can expect for the high holy days, what you can expect for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and how to prepare yourself. But let me give you three prophetic points right now. Three prophetic points for you to expect in this month of August. Okay, remember August is the month of Av and Elo. Av, Ava, Abi, Menachem Av, the counseling father, and Elo, which means I am my beloved's and he is mine. Psalm, Psalm 6 3. My gosh. Love, love, love. Av, 
I am my beloved, he is mine. Abba, bridegroom. That's the month of August right now. As is repentance, coming near to God, searching. Our, that's why I'm starting another 21-day fast on Monday. I'm starting another 21-day fast on Monday, people of God. So I'm going to enjoy my steaks tomorrow before I enter a 21 day fast. Hallelujah. But here's three prophetic points for you, for you to expect and to see in this month of August. Are you ready? All right, number one, birthing. All right, I know some of these are just such charismatic layman's terms, but there's, there's an anointing on it, birthing, okay? Why? Because there's a bridal intimacy taking place. So it's a month of birthing in prayer, birthing in fasting, birthing as, uh, you know, you're, you're meeting with your maker in the field, in the vineyards with the new wine. It's a time of birthing. Someone say birthing, right? Number three, bounty. Someone say bounty. It's a time of blessings. Let me tell you, when God is close to, when you're close to God, what happens? You get blessed. The anointing rubs off. The anointing comes forth. So this is a month of great bounty and great recompense. It's, it's a month where mercy and forgiveness is released in the month of Elul. So as mercy comes, the bounty of the Lord comes. The favor of the Lord comes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. All right, so it's a month of birthing. It's a month of bounty or blessings. And number three, it's a month of new Beginnings. Some say new beginnings. We're about to close the book very soon on 5781. And soon we are about to open the new books for 5782. I don't know about you, people of God, but I want good things to be written in my books. I want, and it doesn't doesn't matter what man or woman have written about you. It matters what God has written about you. It is written. So, I want the Lord to write good things about me in my books. My books of remembrance, my books of destiny, my books of life. I want God to write good things about me. And I believe the Lord is about to write some good things about you. The books of heaven are opened. We are one month away from 5782, and I've already talked about this, but I will be talking more about points for 5782 in the days and weeks to come. Get ready, you know. It's going to be a lot of word and a lot of teaching and impartation and prayer and preparation. But the king is in the field. Daughters of Jerusalem, get ready for bridal glory. Get ready for new wine, the marriage supper of the land. Your lowest point will become your highest point. Bagong. Menachem Av, the counsel, the comfort of Abba Father, Abi, the nearness of Daria. And of course, Elol, I am my beloved and he is mine. The king is in the field, he's right there. He's right here. He's so close because there's so much seeking God, repentance, teshuvah. Turning away from sin and turning to God. There's so much that the heavens are ripe. The heavens are ripe with rain and outpouring. Send the rain, oh God. I declare rain over California. I declare rain over the wildfires, the forest fires. I declare heavy rain is coming to you. The heavens are ripe. The heavens are overdue. There is an outpouring of God that is coming to the United States of America. An outpouring of God that is coming to you and your family today in the last month of 5781 in Elul, in Av, in August. It's going to be a month where the Father is releasing his blessing and his favor over you the books are opened and no devil can overturn his words the books of heaven are open people of God what are you going to do what are you going to do in the month of August the books of heaven are opened <laughs> It's a month of birthing, it's a month of bounty, and it's a month of new beginnings. 
I want to pray with you people of God. Did y'all enjoy this today? Did y'all enjoy this today, huh? Y'all are going to feel the nearness of God. Really, it's, it's, it's times where God separates people. He starts bringing people into the prayer closet, more into the secret place. Separates them away from phony, fake people. Amen. Someone say hallelujah. Adrian, any last words you have for our people today? No, I'm just um, blessed by this Facebook Live tremendously. Say it louder. I am blessed by today's Facebook Live, Facebook Live tremendously. Why are you blessed? It just resonated with everything God had been speaking to me. You know, like getting closer, getting more into the secret place. That was right on for me. Getting more into the secret place. Absolutely. Remember, how you finish a season determines how you enter into the next season. How you finish a year determines how you enter into the new year. I mean, think about this. You know, if, if imagine you're a freshman or you're a fresh woman, right? You, you, you are in ninth grade, you're a freshman, and you finish the year with bad grades. That will determine the classes you have in the new year. Ooh, I feel the Lord. So right now is the last month for you to get your GPA up. You better sucker up to your teachers, okay? You better get your extra good brownie points right now. You better bump up your GPA because when the new school year starts, are you going to be in the bad class, the lame class, or are you going to be in the high-level class? Someone say, I'm graduating. Somebody say, I am upgrading. Someone say, I am going up like never before. I want to pray with you, people of God. Remember, Monday, we have our webinar. Monday, Monday, Monday. Myself, Jesse Shan, and Natasha Hinn. You don't want to miss it. Rabba, ba, 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 ba. Well, I want to pray over you. Lord, I thank you. In this month of Elul, there will be no distractions. There will be... No deviations, no derailment, no delays. And I thank you, Father, that you're so close, you're so near. And the evidence of that is going to be absolutely astounding and astonishing. The evidence of your nearness is going to be so tangible that people are going to fear you. People are going to be afraid. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Release your awesome presence, Lord, your terrifying power. I pray, Daddy, that you would release your terrifying power. You release your awesome, magnificent presence that it would be so terrifying that people would be scared. <laughs> Renew your love in us again, O oh God. Renew your love in me again, O oh God. Renew your steadfast love. A steadfast spirit. And I thank you for this month of August. It's going to be a month of new beginnings and birthings and bounty. Get ready, get ready, get ready. The books are open, people of God. How do you want to approach this? How do you want to go about this? Huh? Catch me outside. How do you want to do this? The books of heaven are open. And I declare good things are being written about you. Bless you. Thanks for watching today. Give us some hearts, likes, and do share. Share, share, share. And, uh, you know, if you want to give and sow into this word today, it's good to see some new names here. If the Lord is prompting you to sow, we're going to give you this, uh, the giving link right there. All right. The giving link. Of course, in the next few days and weeks to come, I'm going to be talking a lot more about uh, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, 5782, and exactly what we need to do to prepare our hearts and to be in the right place. Amen. But uh, our giving link will be right there. I encourage all of you to sow into this word for the month of August. Okay. Birthing, bounty, and new beginnings. Sow into this prophetic word of the month. <clears throat> 
And I want to thank all of you in advance for watching, for following, subscribing, for being a supporter and sponsor. And uh, my gosh, while the books are open, take advantage of it. Amen. The king is in the field, people of God. Bless you, love you. I'll see you soon. Ciao.